another variation still in the Black Shoals Merton model, no dividends. However, we, the underlying is going to be a future sort of forward contract. The interest rate is deterministic in the Black Shoals Merton model, so futures and forwards have the same price. All right, so let's. Why is this interesting? Because often it is, in fact, more. Um, uh, less expensive to trade in futures markets and with futures than in the uh, than in the actual um, market on the un underlying. Uh, so here, here the underlying, in fact, would be the futures contract, uh, and it's convenient to know the formula for options on futures contracts. All right. We remember first that uh, the, the there was a forward price, which is also now the futures price formula where f of t, the futures price, is the stock price times the value of one dollar after time capital T minus t evaluated at a risk-free rate. Right? Just this exponential times s of t. All right, then we can do Ito's rule on this product and again I'm not going to do it in detail, we've seen it before. All you, all it happens is you get minus r f term Okay, if you <coughs> if your stock is mu d t and sigma d w, you, you're going to get minus r times f term here. So it's going to be mu minus r d t plus f sigma d w. Right. So that is that is in fact the uh, model for the futures price in, uh, coming from the Black Scholes Merton model for the stock. It's still the same stock, so the risk neutral probability is still the same. So WQ is going to be the same as in the Black Scholes Merton model. It's going to be W plus mu minus R over sigma. Okay, if I replace DW by DWQ, again mu and mu will cancel. Actually now R and R will also cancel. Okay. Not only mu, but also R will cancel. And I will get that the futures price without discounting is a martingale under the pricing probability. Okay? There's a zero DT term. The futures price itself is already uh, a martingale, basically because this is because of marking to market. You get rid of the interest rate. Uh, so, so, <coughs> so now when you apply the logic of, of Black-Scholes partial differential equation, if you do Ito's rule, there will be no R term, no drift term, uh, multiplying the first derivative. Okay? So in fact the partial differential equation is going to look simpler, there is one term less, and it's going to look like this. Okay? This is the same, or, well almost the same as the Black-Scholes partial differential equations, except in Black-Scholes we also had a term uh, plus R uh, C S C S. Okay? We had a delta term with the first derivative, but, but that came from the drift of, of uh, uh, S in the black Scholes model being equal to Rs. But now the drift is zero for the futures, so there, this term will not be there. Okay? The, it would be with F, but th this term will not be there. And in terms of the futures price, the partial differential equation is, is like this, without the first derivative term. Okay? That, that means when where we had R in the stock, it's going to be zero. And in fact, we can compute. So I'm going to delete this because uh, it's not there. And uh, we can now find the formula. Again, we can do it either by uh, partial differential equation or directly computing the value for the futures price at maturity from this equation. Either way, if you do that, you get the call option formula on a call option uh, on a futures contract. And it looks like this. There would be no R. Okay, there is no. Let me just get here my pen. Okay, there is, oh, I don't get it, doesn't matter. That R from inside here disappeared because that was R coming from from the dynamics of the underlying uh, and, and disappeared. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, we, we have it here because 
uh, here this is what the S would be the discounted F is uh, the stock price okay so this is the bottom line is there is a similar formula on a call option with future on futures it's similar to the black shows formula okay that was this second extension